It was on March 29th, so it was a few Fridays ago. Uh, it's from 6 to 12, and we stand for all six hours to represent that uh, the kids don't uh, get a break from their fight, and so we're going to do that for the six hours that we're there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then... So you stand for all that time? Yes, we And do what stand. happens while you're standing? What are you, what are you doing? Um, we have a number of activities. We do volleyball tournaments. We do... Uh, three-point contest we have speakers and then a portion of the night is dedicated to um, kind of like reflecting on the families and kids that were affected so we have uh, like I said speakers this year we had two wonderful speakers come in and they each spoke for about 20 minutes about their experience with cancer and then we had a luminary walk where we walked through the hallways the back hallways of the school and we had little lanterns with lights in them for names of people who have been affected by the disease mm -hmm. oh, that's wonderful it's wonderful, and and to, I bet you that the kind of spirit that you hear there uh, and see there is, is something you don't see at any other time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was super special this year too. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Hold your stress cows up for our Facebook viewers. There you go. They got Allied Milk Producer stress cows for coming here today. Uh, anything else we need to know about Fawn from this year? Um, we actually raised the most money we've ever raised mm -hmm. with uh, almost forty-five thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, it was it's terrific. Special. Man, nice job by everybody at the senior mm -hmm. high. And, of course, that doesn't happen just by the people standing there. It takes people giving to them in order to support their efforts. So yes. thanks to everybody who gave. Yeah. Wonderful. Good, good. And thanks for the report. Good stuff. Yep. Yeah, thank, you. Stuff. thank you. Thank yeah, you. Great effort and great outpouring of their contributions as well as our school community and community at large for supporting such a worthy cause. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see an assembly of such uh, raw talent come together uh, for a common cause and produce uh, what they did is remarkable. We're very proud of their efforts. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So what's next? Uh, next up, we have, uh, and Chase is going to do some double duty here, but we have uh, Donnie Bauer, secondary special education teacher at the senior high school, who is also a key club co-advisor in one of the events that we'll be holding at our school, uh, a Spirit Day. Mm-hmm. Morning. Hi, Todd. How are you? Wonderful. Good to see you. Good. You too. Uh, so our Spirit Day event is on Friday, May 3rd. Uh, we host about 150 to 175 life skills students from two counties, about 13 different schools. Uh, they come in and we put on like track and field events, carnival, and I'll let the kids tell you a little more about that. But uh, we have um, Chase Cunningham and Sydney Jones here. Uh, they're the chairs for the event. So um, we have about 100, 150 key club workers that help out with the event. Um, it's all day. It's it's a fun event and everybody that's involved really enjoys it. So I'll let them add to the experience. There. Terrific. Chase, have you ever gotten to class in the last six weeks or so? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> all right. Let's Let's talk about this. All right, um, so Spirit Day, as he said, we have life skills. Tell you what, let's switch you over to this microphone. This is a stronger mic over here, and, and that way when we double-team a microphone, it sounds better on this one. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as he said, we have a bunch of life skills students from uh, local schools come in, and we hold a bunch of events. Uh, it's run by Key Club, and then a few of us chair it, along with Mr. Bowers and a few other teachers. Um, we have a track of field event, event so they all get to... Uh, race and have fun it's outside it's a great time uh we have other events yeah we have a carnival set up so they can like get cotton candy popcorn all that kind of stuff and we have music going on in the gym so if they just want to run around and have fun then that's an option too and mm -hmm. i mean it's just a really good day for all of us i think everyone involved just has so much fun with it so what's the grade range of the students that this is put on for um it's elementary through high school Elemen so it all goes the way all through. the way up all the yep. way through and activities for all of them yeah, yeah. Every single one. Oh, yeah. So as students uh, who are a part of this whole effort and, and your fellow students, uh, how much fun is it to prepare for this and, and to do things that you know are going to be helping students who might not have the same capabilities uh, as, as, others, as others might? Um, it's a lot of fun, but I think the most fun is when we're there with the kids. Um, it really just puts a smile on everyone's face, and hopefully we have a nice day so we can be outside and run around and uh, enjoy each other. It's just, it's a lot of fun. So has that happened yet, or is it still to come? Um, it's on May 3rd, May 3rd, so it's coming up here soon. All right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll fix the weather for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. So how big is the committee that's uh, doing this? There's 
four chairs? Five of us. Five chairs, and then uh, we, like, give it out to key clubs, so all of our members, like Mr. Bowers said, like 150 workers are there. So a large group, yeah. Pretty good group. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. And you're having fun with it, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Thanks for coming in to tell us about that. Thank, Thank you. you. Does Chase do anything else around the school that we need to <laughs> ask him about? I would have 850 of him any day. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And he gets his stress cow back. He does. He gets nice. it. He's squeezing it over there right now. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, Todd, we're very proud of our students and their, and their service-based contributions at our school. They represent our, uh, themselves and our school in, in such, a, such great capacity. Um, but we also have students who are involved in academic uh, content competitions. Mm -hmm. And next, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Mossgrove, a secondary uh, social studies teacher, and he brought some students here to talk about uh, their accomplishments on History Day. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mr. Mossgrove, good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Marino. Yeah, how are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. That's terrific. That's terrific. You brought a couple kids with you today. I did. I brought with me Sarah Rakonin and Jason Kowalczyk, and they are we are part of what uh, is a competition across the Commonwealth called National History Day. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, participated in the regional competition at IUP on March 29th, uh, which we won uh, in our category of group documentary, along with two other students, Drew Rado and uh, uh, Carmela Barbara. Um, and we were fortunate enough to take first place, and then we were now going out to Carlisle to participate in the state competition uh, there on May 10th and 11th. Um, and Sarah and Jason will be representing us out there. The mm -hmm. IUP holds the regional, and it's very nice for us to have it here in our hometown. Dr. Werner Lippert and the history department over there, they do a wonderful job. And um, we were fortunate enough to come out on top in our category this year and look forward to representing the community and our school at the state competition. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk to our students again. I think it's pretty uh, clear which one is Sarah in terms of vocal quality. So, uh, Sarah, <laughs> let's, uh, uh, your voice is probably a little higher than your, your companions there. So, so let's start with you. Okay, so our project this year was, um, ba the, the theme for the year was tragedy and triumph. So we had to find a topic that fulfilled both of those categories. So we chose um, the Manhattan Project, which was the making of the atomic bombs and the dropping of them on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. That involves a lot of research, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so tell me how you do it. How do you divvy up the duties, and, and how, what does each member of the team bring to the table? Well, um... Uh, we all did a lot of research. That was, like, for, like, a few months, we just, just worked through research, making sure we all knew what we were talking about, and we were able to, to figure out all the facts and, uh, like, individual story statements from people mm -hmm. who were unique to the project. Now, when you put it all together, then how? What's the format? Is it PowerPoint or how's it done? It's a video, oh, it's uh, a so video. it's an actual video documentary. Uh huh. Wow. So you had archival footage. Yes. Yeah, and and then you combined it. I'm I'm sure with some some effects, and mm -hmm. were able to come up with this video. Terrific. So, what surprised you about the Manhattan Project that uh, maybe you hadn't known before? Well, they have the they made these uh, secret cities across the country where these cities were built specifically for the purpose of doing the research for the bombs and experiments, and they were built for like tens of thousands of workers, and they had no idea what they were doing research for, mm -hmm. and the towns were just like any other town, like Indiana, like high schools, work offices, and at the end they had way more people in the towns than they originally planned yeah really yeah oh that's interesting that's interesting and then of course it centers around the university of chicago doesn't it yes <laughs> that's where that's where everything comes together uh so you're you did the regional how many uh, teams were at the regional in our Certainly. section i think there was nine 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 and and you came out on top there yes yeah. and now you're head when is the uh, state competition May 10th and 11th. And it's where? Carlisle, Pennsylvania. In Carlisle. In Carlisle. Well, that sounds like a, a, a tremendous thing. You looking forward to it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, is it going to be the same, or since you've been through one uh, competition with this particular presentation, do you do refinements in, in order to go to the state? Yeah, we're able to make adjustments based on the judges' opinions and what they think we, we hit well and what we, they think we should hit a little bit more harder. Terrific. 
Terrific. Well, good luck there. It sounds like you've got a, got your hands on to something really cool to work with, too. Mr. Mosgrove, uh, sounds like a really good group. It's an excellent group, and they work uh, well. The, the digital work with their, their uh, documentary uh, is, is outstanding. It's something that I can utilize in class as a teaching tool. The quality of it is outstanding. They work with Mr. Eric Pushkar and the digital media, but they do. And I do want to add that this work is done above and beyond the regular school day. So this is all extra work that these students have put in yeah. hours and hours and hours, literally since September till till now. So wow. they've uh, they've really put the time in, and we, I appreciate the work that they've done. They've done a, a wonderful job this year. That's why I gave them. Um bottles from the allied milk producer because uh, i know they've been working so hard they don't have any stress they didn't get stress cows they got <laughs> they got bottles hey congratulations and good luck thank you thank you wonderful job by them and again academic accomplishments at uh, indiana senior high principal McElhaney, you're and, back and following that uh I'd like to bring up uh, mr keaton stance secondary school technology education teacher but one of our leaders in our stem initiatives in education at the senior high school he is here to talk about a project that will be will involve uh, many aspects of our um, program here at the senior high school. Mm -hmm. Can we do this in three minutes or less, or do we need to hold you over? We can certainly do this in three okay. minutes or less. Good morning, Todd. Good morning. Uh, so as Mr. McElhaney said, uh, uh, STEM initiative is a big part of our school there. Uh, I'm in the technology education department, and we're always looking to involve science and mathematics and engineering uh, throughout all of our curriculum. Uh, recently, I was made aware of a project through our intermediate unit um, that uh, there's organizations that are putting out uh, space balloons or launching space balloons. So I started to investigate on this a little bit. Met a gentleman from IU5 that's practiced this several times, and uh, he shared the information with us via our intermediate unit circuit. And uh, on May 10th, we're going to send a space balloon in the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it'll be about an eight-foot diameter helium balloon. We're going to put it off from the center of the football field. Uh, it will arrive or burst at about 65,000 feet in the air. We'll have some equipment on there to take some cameras and footage of the event as it ascends and descends. Um, with the prevailing winds and jet stream, it will uh, land about 100 miles east of here. Really? Um, so we'll have GPS tracking and uh, equipment in there so that we can go and retrieve our apparatus and uh, collect the data associated with us. I would guess that when you do something like that, there are some clearances you have to obtain. We have been working on that. Recently, the school has established an aviation club, so we've got some interested students involved in aviation club, and uh, we just had a meeting last week. They are organized and working through our FAA clearances and preparing the work for the ATC. Um, it will be essentially an unmanned weather balloon, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we've got... What is the material that uh, the balloon is made of? It's latex, just a oh, lot yeah. like your doctor's glove, just a, a thicker latex glove. And essentially, the helium is just to get it to the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the pressure decreases, the balloon will actually increase to the point where it just will burst. Yeah. And that's where you reach your terminal height. So. There you go. Uh, neat projects. So. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. You'll keep us up to date? Certainly we'll do so. Wonderful. And I'm assuming there will be video as you as you as the thing takes For off. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. So. We'll see if we can get our hands on that and maybe share it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Principal McElhenney, that is cool. It is. The I sky like is the limit, Todd. The sky is the limit, yes, he said. Is. In this case, the sky might not be the limit. That you, could be as One well. never knows. You know, you could just keep going. Infinity. Oh, wait a second. That's the adventures. All right. We're good. You're done. We're good. I am done. Thank wow. you so much for, for allowing us to come up here and promote our students and our programs and the, the events and happenings at the senior high school. And we got it done with eight seconds to spare. It is the voice of Indiana County, WC.